I just have to say for just a quick second, these look and smell awesome. So let's turn them over and see what they look like. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I flipped over my pumpkin. They look beautiful. Look at that. That is beautiful. Okay. Now is what I need to do is I'm gonna go ahead and scoop this out, put it in a bowl, and I'm gonna let it cool down. Oh, this is, this is great. This looks terrific. The meat on these pumpkins look really, really good. As I'm taking the, the meat out of the pumpkin, it is just coming right off of the skin here. You know you've cooked it well when it just comes right off with no problem. Okay, I've got pretty much, oh, there's a little bit left here. Look at that, that's beautiful. I now have all of the meat out of my pumpkin and I'm gonna set this aside away from my wood cook stove and let it cool down. Once the meat of your pumpkin has cooled, you wanna then process it in your food processor. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And is what I'm gonna do too is, when I'm done processing it, I'm gonna just store it in my mason jar so that I can scoop out the amount that I need for my pumpkin pie. And then I can store the rest in my refrigerator to use at a later date for either another pumpkin pie or maybe some pumpkin bread. So let's get started. Oh, this is great. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and puree my pumpkin meat. I think this might be ready. Let's take a look. Oh, this looks great. So here's the consistency that you want. That is great. And this pumpkin is awesome. It's not too runny. I've had some pumpkins where they're a little runny. And if they are, there's a little water excess, too much water excess. Put this in a sieve and put it over your bowl and just let the water drip out while you're making the rest of your, um, your pumpkin pie filling. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this into my cork jar. Oh, this looks great. This is what you want. I love it. I just checked my wood stove. The temperature in my oven is about 380 degrees. Perfect for my pie. By the time I'm done here, my oven temperature should be around 350, 360. So I'm doing really good with my wood cook stove. So I'm just gonna let everything stay buttoned up until I'm ready to put my pie in. So let's go ahead and make our pumpkin pie filling. I got this recipe that I'm using for one, how to cook my own fresh pumpkin, okay? And to make my pumpkin pie filling from Mary Jane's Farm. I love this magazine. And I started getting this back in 2010 and she's got some great tips and you know she lives here in Idaho which is kind of fun and anyway so that's the recipe I am following for my pumpkin pie filling so I need a half a cup of white sugar there's a half a cup I need a fourth of a cup of brown sugar which is kind of a fun little extra thing and you want to make sure that you pack your brown sugar Here's my fourth of a cup. And then I need a half a teaspoon of salt. And once again, I love to use my kosher salt. Okay. Then I'm gonna add all my spices. I'd like to do all my spices separate. I don't like to buy the pumpkin pie spice. I don't know why. I just really like to use all the spices that it calls for for the pumpkin pie. So the first one I'm gonna do is cinnamon and you want one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. I can hear my husband working on the truck outside. Okay, there is my cinnamon. Man, love the smell. I need a half a teaspoon of ginger. You know, having the measuring spoons that are all together just makes it so easy that you can just flip whatever. Uh, another half a teaspoon of nutmeg. I can just flip to whatever size teaspoon I need. I love it. Half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And last but not least, ground clove. And we're gonna use a fourth of a teaspoon of ground clove, which is awesome. Okay, now we are just gonna go ahead and mix that up. I got myself a spoon here. Just kind of mix that up real nice. And the brown sugar, if there's lumps, just kind of break them up a little bit, okay? and your sugar spice salt concoction. 
should look something like this. Beautiful. Yeah, we are just about there to get that pumpkin pie filling in the crust. Okay, now the next thing you want to add, you want to add two eggs and of course my farm fresh eggs from my ladies, which I totally love. And you can use a, either a hand mixer or I've got kind of the oldie but goodie non-electric hand mixer and you just kind of want to mix in your eggs with your sugar okay i like to kind of give it a little bit of a stir mix it around oh the smell of all those spices oh my gosh there's nothing like pumpkin pie for the holidays you know what is that i don't know it's awesome okay so here we go i've got now my eggs mixed in with my sugars and my spices Oh my gosh, that is looking just awesome. I want one and a half cups of my pumpkin puree and a cup of evap milk. And I'm gonna alternate putting that in. Here's what I like to do with my evap milk. I've got kind of an oldie but goodie opener with the point. I don't find these very often anymore, but I'm gonna open up my can that way so I can pour it. You wanna obviously put a hole on both sides so it'll pour out. But how cool is that? Can you see those holes right there? I love that. Okay, you know having two sets of measuring cups sure comes in handy. All right, so here's my one cup. I need one and a half cups of my pumpkin puree. So here's one cup and I'm kind of just leveling it off here a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and put my one cup in. And I've already added a little bit, um, a little bit of my evap milk. Okay, and my measuring cup tells me inside a half a cup. So I'm gonna just go ahead and get ready my other, my half a cup. So I'm all ready to go here. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up now. Oh, this is looking great. Okay, I'm gonna put my other evap in, the rest of my evap. One thing I notice with homemade pumpkin pie when you make your own puree, I'm gonna put my other puree in while I'm chit-chatting here, is my pumpkin pies don't turn out bright orange. They actually turn out kind of dark, dark, dark orange onto the brown tone. Now, isn't that interesting, huh? Okay, now I need to see if I mi missed anything. I need to also now add two tablespoons of flour. That's what's gonna kind of thicken everything up. I thought I was missing something. There's one, two. Oh yeah, glad I didn't forget that. I would have had a very runny pumpkin pie. Okay, now let's beat that in. Oh yeah, this is great. There's something to cooking with, from scratch, isn't there? Wow. Okay, we are ready. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let's pour it into our pie crust that we made. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in. Oh, beautiful. Just beautiful. All right, I now have my, my um, pumpkin pie filling all poured into my pumpkin pie crust. I have a little trick that I like to do when I am making my, my pies. I do not care for my crust to be so, so dark. So what I like to do is I cover mine with some foil. Now, this is what I do. Take a piece of foil that's a little bit bigger than my pie, and you're gonna fold it into fourths, okay? So fold it in half, fold it in half again, just like this. Okay, grab yourself some scissors. Now, with this, the side that's open, that's um, the fold here that doesn't open, we're gonna cut just like this, and we're gonna make a, okay, or we're gonna make a half a moon. So I'm gonna cut this. So now we've got that, right? So this is the circle, but we're not gonna use that part. We're gonna use this. So we're gonna open this up very carefully. Now we have a circle, and we're gonna place that on the pie. All right, is what I'm gonna do now is it's a little long, so I'm gonna actually just fold this a little bit like that to get it to actually fit my opening. Okay, can you see that? Now, just take your foil and gently pat it around your pie. All right, now look at that. This pie is ready to be baked. I'm excited. Let's go check the wood stove and see what the temperature is and see if we're ready to go.